episode of Maxwell Podcast. There's Joe Sway. There's Max. I'm somehow in the mix here, and I'm loving it. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and you I are. think I, Yeah, man. I, this is great. And I will tell you, it's great because of one reason. Draymond Green. Draymond Green, baby. What the hell? Double standard? I agree with them. I'm going to throw it to Max. You agree with him, Nick? Normally, you are or you are pro men. Psych! You are. <laughs> I, don't I, I knew it. I knew it. I knew that was Jesus. No, like, I'll start there. I'm surprised Listen, you let I'm, off with this. Yeah, why not? Because I know it's a topic that's on the tip of our tongue. Because you know, and and, and truthfully, I know you two are going to disagree with me. So I like that, and I just feel like it's any other. It's an at will employment, and you can get fired for any reason except to ask you to do something illegal and mm. therefore if they want to arrest somebody uh like drummond they should be able to and in turn if they want to fire somebody like harden they should be able to so meaning you know the two comparisons max what say you i know you're gonna hate uh, everything I'm I just trying said. To out, like where were you at with that nick i mean you're you, what do you, mean? you went you went down down the street and then came back and i don't even know where you're at <laughs> the, the topic here is that Draymond Green is talking about a double standard in the NBA, saying that owners get mad at James Harden when he wanted to leave town and he dogged it. Oh, they but should. at the same time, when players have guaranteed contracts, then teams sit them out and say, okay, we're ready to trade you now, but we're not going to play you. So you can just sit out now. So what is what? Where is the big difference at? Because they yeah. because they own they they're running the team. Yeah, but Max, this is a whole I, other I part that. of this that it's easy for Draymond to leave out. I mean, let's face it. You think Dre? You, you think uh, Andre Drummond wants to kick it there in Cleveland? You know, he's in on this, right? I, I think that's the difference there. Because whereas when the player is getting traded, or at least in another situation where a player is getting traded and doesn't want to leave, yeah, he has no say in it. Then when a team, I agree with that. It's a double okay. standard. Yeah, yeah, no trade in it. Oh, yeah. No, no, I get yeah, it because I, you're not the, the the team is not always quote unquote loyal, right? But then when the player is not loyal, there's a big problem. Well, I, listen, Max, you're right. I am. I did come off all over the place because you know what? It is a double standard, and the employer has a right to employ with a double standard. Nick likes the double standard. He no, has, I'm not saying I would do it, but, but, but as an employer. But you, but how can how can that be, Nick? And, and let me give you a good example. Fans were always talking about players not having any, any loyalty. That was a big thing with LeBron James. Oh my God, he's not loyal to Cleveland at all. He 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 leaves them high and dry. Destroyed the economy. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. When he had when he played there for four years and made them relevant, but once he was a free agent. He had a right to go play someplace else, right? That Why were people the burning his jersey and pissed off because he left as a free agent? Now, That's the same it. example I'm gonna give you is this one in 1980. I know it's coming. 1984. <laughs> 1984 <laughs> here it is. 1984. I signed a four. I signed a five-year contract with the Celtics. Oh boy, For that's what this is all buck. about. Huh, man? Who knew this was coming, Joe Swain? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just saying here. I'm just I should have seen this coming. You're talking about loyalty. They decided they wanted to trade me. What where was where was this loyalty cap that everybody talks about? Well, they well, signed they it in the did, contract. But what they did, they, they did. want to get on championship, Max. No, they did what was best for the team. That's what they did. They did what they thought I, was I best that's for a whole team. other argument because I don't agree. Well, that's what they did. They did what right. they thought was best for the team. And right. as Joe Sway kicked in, they won another championship. They would have won several more had they kept yeah, it. Possibility, but they won, Definitely. They won one more. But they well, what I mean by that, Max, is that when, it, when a team's going to go all in, they're going to go all in. It doesn't, they don't care who's getting traded. Like, that's my point. With there, there, There's no such thing as loyalty when it's, look, we're trying to win another championship. Well, Everyone, don't, don't, give you know, me that, don't give me that crap and don't give me that shit about loyalty to a team when a team can sit down and trade you away. I don't want to hear right. this. Max, yeah. can you it, see Dr. J? Can you it, see it, Dr. It was J? Called, you know what it's called, Nick? It's called a business. Yeah. And and thank and look and do it like That's this. That's a double standard. And no, do it like this. Fans should see it as a business, and players see it as a business. So when things happen, nobody should be pissed off. 
You know, no, you shouldn't be pissed off at me because I said, look, I got to go. They traded me. I wasn't pissed off. I was like, okay, you know, that's their that's their prerogative. They but can Max, do you weren't, they you, you, weren't, you weren't in on it though, right? Uh, and in a lot of these cases, the players no, in on it. You no, weren't in on it. No, no. That, that's the difference. No, 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 no. I had it still to, rings true though. It's no, still true. I had to be in on it because yeah, he had to approve the way, it. The way the contracts were set up is oh. I had to redo my contract and but you didn't initiate it. To go. No, I didn't you initiate didn't, it. Yeah. I didn't initiate it. Okay, and, I guess that's a better way to put it. And then. I didn't initiate it and I lost money. Yeah. A lot. And I, and I lost some money. And a sneaker deal. deal. Yeah, I, had, I lost some money in the deal. So so people start talking about loyalty and, oh, my God, let's be loyal to the team. Tom Brady wasn't loyal. This person, uh, when you think about players and what they do, their, their shelf life is a short. And if they make decisions from a business standpoint about themselves, fans shouldn't get pissed off about that. I know you you can be disappointed, but there's a there's a big difference between disappointment and pissed off that the guy decides to leave. LeBron James made Cleveland relevant. He, that's what he did. We didn't even know Drummond who they, is yeah, not. We didn't even know who the hell the Cavaliers were, and he played there for what three four years. Got them to the finals longer, they, they, longer. They didn't win it. Whatever they, he got them to the finals. Yeah, and seven years. And he played there for seven years, played his contract out, and decided to go elsewhere. It was a big to do when he left. Now, people keep saying, well, it was about the decision because he didn't tell Dan Gilbert. He didn't call Dan Gilbert. Well, Dan the only Gilbert mistake he ever out. made. Dan Gilbert found out just like the yeah. rest of us. Yeah, I'm that's leaving. right. I'm going to South Beach. No, that, that was my problem. I think back. You at, 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 at the time, my, my problem was that he was 25 years old, and I thought he was he was giving up too easily. That's just me, though. That's just my, my thing wasn't he should have called Dan Gale, but my thing was uh, you should just keep trying to beat the older aging Celtics because chances are you're going to get there at some point. I mean, I found that was my, that, just I like found Isaiah that. Thomas did, just like Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan just like did. the old timers did. So yeah. here's my thing. My thing is LeBron knew he was leaving. He started the season and changed his jersey number from 23 to six because Miami has 23 retired six he said 23 should never be worn again by anyone yet he's wearing it now he chose six Dr. J and Bill Russell's number hey, all right he knew you. where he, he said, was going because he that said, he, had he said Miami Pat Riley Miami retired Miami Jordan's retired number 20, they retired Jordan's number oh yes idiotic typical they need to fill seats but Pat Riley, who we all know on this call, if you guys disagree, I mean, I don't know, but the guy's a friggin', I mean, he's Red Auerbach in the dirtiest sense, if you want to say, from tampering and all that stuff. LeBron knew he was leaving, and then let's face it, Max, you were there, we were there. 2010, La Elbow, he threw that series. I, I, I don't think he gave it a, a, any effort whatsoever. The Celtics had no business beating that Cavaliers team. And everybody will go on and on about he had no help, but they Nick, won 66 Nick, fucking Nick, games. Nick, Nick, name me the guys on that Cavalier team other than LeBron. Shaquille O'Neal, Mo oh, Williams. Done. You're already wrong. Done. You're already wrong. You're, you're already El Gauskas. You're, yeah, you're, 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 you're thinking of Cass, Cass 3.0, Nick, Nick. Let me do you like somebody used to say all the time. You're making my point, Nick. Okay. Well, how'd they win 66 games and they danced all over the court all season? I got you. I got you. I got you, Max. I got you. Nick, and you start saying. No, no, no. Wait, wait. You talking about the team that went to the finals? No, we're talking about the 2010 team when he left. Oh. Okay, Nick. They won 66 games. The other team's more fun. I mean, how many of those guys were all-stars? And please don't talk about Shaquille O'Neal. Being an all it was still team. a formidable force. He oh, was a no, serviceable no, center. No, he was, no, he was not. Antoine James. The year later, we we gave Mo up. Williams. The Celtics gave up Kendrick Perkins for him one year later. They gave him up. No, they did. Basically, they went with Jermaine O'Neal injured no, and Shaquille O'Neal. Hey, fellas, how do we how do we end up here? with him? How do we Let's circle up? this in, Josue. You always have to be the, next, the lead host because I suck at it. Next order of business. Go ahead, Nick. All right, let's reel it in. Drummond doesn't matter if the co if the player if the teams want to sit him they could sit him. That's my opinion, and I think what James Harden did was deplorable. He wore a fat suit. I'm pretty sure of it. Look at uh, my face. 
There it is. Next. next on the next on the line of order of business, the Celtics. Let's start here. Last night I watched the post game show. Mm-hmm. Joe Sway big time them. He was not available. Oh, but one well, of the <laughs> but one of the big topics was is Jason Tatum and, and Jalen Brown are they smart? Are they smart? Are they soft? Can they lead? I don't think they're. And I don't think Here's they're. the kicker. Wait, Max, there's three What's questions. the last one? Here's, What's the last one? The last question is, do you want them? Do you think they're ready to make the All-Star game again? Do you want them on the All-Star team? And it says, hear it out. The, the Playmaster last night, uh, Max, his big argument was, I, I think they need to work instead of be praised at the All-Star game. I think they need to really work on their skills to get this team in order. Maybe they practice, whatever. And furthermore, I don't know that I want Jason Tatum around the likes of Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, all that colluding that goes on down there at the All-Star game. That was the mm. that was the debate. I think it's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, Nick, That's interesting. Let, me say, let me say what you already said about that. You had already said that Jason Tatum wasn't coming back anyway, and that was a year ago because, because all that malarkey. To, he was talking to Kyrie Irving. I saw him, and he sat there and he talked. And I said he's not coming back. And look, don't worry about all that. He That's already, not how he, you, you said that, that Nick. About, you said both that? the guys you talk about are under contract now. Now, if they That's go down there, I, I don't care about the All Star game. What do you think they're going to do? You, oh, wait a minute. You think that during these five days or whatever it is, or days they yeah. have, they're going to go in the gym and practice what? Shooting? Is that what you think is going to happen? No. I said the Playmaster said it, not, well, me. not the play that master. I don't agree with. I can it. tell you the Playmaster is wrong here. <laughs> yeah, I agree talking? with that. I, I agree with that, Nick. But you know what, Jaylen Max? Brown, uh, a, Jaylen Brown okay. needs, needs this award. You're about to say, okay. He, yeah. he busted his ass to get better. So it I gives agree. him and he's some validation up the on what he's done going to the All-Star game. So I have no problem with it. And yeah. I, do I want the All-Star game? Not really. But I think this, again, this is all about the NBA and money. This is what it's about. The NBA is going to make money. Players are going to make money, too, because of, of this All-Star game. The, don't think that's not the case. So that's what the NBA is doing. They're, show, they're, showcasing, they're showcasing the best All-Star. Now, watch this, Nick. The best All-Star game in any league. Oh, would, I would agree with that. But the, there's no would, consequences. Would be the NBA All-Star game. It's much better than the home run derby. Back, back. <laughs> oh, really? Really? But isn't there? Yeah, I agree isn't with that. There, uh, how, how do you feel about how you feel about the uh, uh, NHL All Star Game? Um, listen, oh, you I'm don't. Not you, dis- I'm not. I'm not. Dis- dis- listen, I'm not disputing what you're saying. I agree. It's the best All Star Game in sports. The, but he's diverting. The, I'm gonna go the, back. How about with, the NFL? How about the NFL All Star Game? I mean, do they even have one? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. they have it in Hawaii. It's the Pro Bowl. Of course, they have one. Pro Bowl. So no, I'm with here- you, Max. I'm, I'm with you because I, I think it's important for Jalen Brown because obviously it's his first All Star selection. He yeah. goes home full circle. I mean, we're not going to forget obviously uh, what he's been doing on the court, but what he's been doing off the court just as equally as important. Uh, that what he, to, to to join the streets of, of Atlanta to drive down there from Boston now to go yeah. back as an All Star first All Star selection. Too. I mean, I, I think that moment alone for Jalen Brown is so important so he can bring that back. And that momentum, because Max, you remember when Jason Tatum got his All Star selection? He had a different swag to him, right? A little different pep, a little different pep in his step. You know, he was uh, saying what up to people more often. He was uh, had a big smile on his face. He took a lot of people looking. He took that in stride. I think Jalen does the same thing. Yeah, people are looking at you as as one of the elite, and I I have no problem of him being selected for the All Star team. I think it's I think it's a great honor. Tatum, huh? Tatum. Did Tatum make it? I mean, he's gonna probably make it as a a uh, alternate. Well, neither made it yet. I don't think, right? Well, the, yeah, they're, they're both, they're both they're be on the I'm pretty they're sure. Both I'm pretty sure Brown, but uh, but Tatum probably is gonna make it more of an alternate than than uh, uh, Brown because Brown had Brown uh, to whatever people surprises probably has had the better season of the two. I'd and, say so. Uh, a raise from where he was at, but but. After everything you just said in the last segment, 
and being a member of the Celtics organization as you are. I'm not a member. Joe Swayze. But Don't get a check. Alumni. Is, yeah. You get a I, check. You, uh, if, I don't get the check, if I'm not getting the check from somebody, I'm not a member. All right. <laughs> take you know that, what I mean. Take that to the bank. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Um, and Joe Sway, devoting the amount of time you do to the team working the beat. Are you comfortable, let, you know, with Jason Tatum being around the likes of Kyrie and all the colluding you know that goes on down there, under contract or not? Do you think it's good for his ego? Do you think it's good for? Do you think he maybe has an ego issue, Sway? No, I don't think so. I think it's really good for him because he can he can go and see Kyrie and see all those other all stars, and he's in a different level now, right, Nick? I mean, this isn't the same guy from a year ago making his first all star selection. He's in a point of his career where he is the top guy on the Celtics. You know, but yeah, sure, Jalen Brown's had one heck of a season, but I think Jason Tatum is he's going to take that next step in in, in leading this team, and I think that he's going to carry himself in a different way. He has a different perspective now. You know, seeing LeBron James or seeing Kyrie Irving, you know, obviously someone in Kyrie Irving that he, he was a teammate in, but he's a different player now. And, and whatever talks, whatever whispers they try to get into his ear, whatever influence they try to do on, on Jason Tatum, I think he's smarter than that. And, and I and I and I trust his good judgment, so to speak. But that's an interesting that's an interesting angle from uh from from uh from my guy over there from John, I'm assuming, right? Is that John? I got John. Playmaster. Right that's that's it. That's got that's John cool. right over it. I figured. Can we look yeah. at it? Can we look at it differently, though, guys? The All Star game. Way you want. The All-Star game this year is not going to be like it was over the last couple of years. In guys, Atlanta, Max? Guys, sure? No. Dude, guys, dude look, Max, they're uh, having parties your out favorite, there. Your favorite uh, no, adult that, fitness center is not going to be open? Are you kidding hey, me? Come, come on, on. Look, come on I Max. Would, I would doubt seriously if you're going to have those players up in them places like that. Because you remember there was the guy. Look, Can we're going to have that on, way? You know where Lou Williams got his chicken wings at? Yeah, that's what the party yeah, is going to be. Yeah, that's what they going to be partying up. So you, no, the players aren't. The Kenny players Smith going to have his annual party. Look, as many. And look, just wait. As long as they have these, players are going to be reluctant to be that. And, and you and I can put a little bit of money on this, but they're going to be reluctant to do that. They're not hanging out like they've done before over the last couple of years because of COVID. They're going to get they're creative. Trying, man. They're trying they're to get, get those guys in, and they're trying to get them out. And I don't like I, the fact that it's Atlanta, but at the same time, I, I still believe they don't. Neither does the mayor, Max. Well, the mayor the, doesn't want it there. The well, I don't care what she wants. She she only reason she's saying she doesn't want it there because of all the people who are going to want to come and get together. But still, you look at the way the NBA is done. This is a this is an opportunity for the league to make money and to give back to some charities. But it's not like the All Star Game of old where collusion and Nick is you always talk about well I don't want him to be around these guys you don't I didn't give my opinion on this guy you don't think he has Kyrie's <laughs> number to call him on the phone or or he can zoom in with call oh, Kyrie it's a lot or different person come on Yo, wait, wait, wait. hold on hold on actually you know what Max serious question Nick uh you're gonna send uh a, a, a CLNS reporter to Atlanta to cover if, you if know, they're allowing media reporter, I mean the, who wouldn't yeah. mind going to Atlanta it would be me and you, Joe Clay. You record. know I'm going through quarantine hell here. It would be you and I down in Atlanta. And we would go get chicken wings at you know where. <laughs> done. No. Done. Not all done. Right. No, right. in all seriousness. That's the most important question of the show. Yet. Most important question. <laughs> I don't. I just want to take a second and talk about Marigold. Uh, with their stem cell uh, research, has been amazing. I went and did an evaluation, and I ended up getting a, uh, a shot. And uh, I'm hoping right now I'm going to be back on the court. These guys were brilliant. They communicate well. They give you an education on what it's like. And that is what really, to me, won me over. Because not only were they going to give me an operation, a procedure, but they were going to educate me about this procedure. And in learning and, 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 and being comfortable, that is how you get well. And that's how you become partners. And uh, my big shout out to those guys. They did a fantastic job. Check them out at marigolmedical.com. That's the place to be. I didn't really love Tatum's reaction to Barkley and Shaq. If you saw, if you guys watched that. he In real time, he found out about it. I didn't love it. It was like someone stole his dog when he was a little kid. Blackie, Max. And, uh, and, and I, it made me think. But the truth is, to me, 
if there's going to be an all-star game, it should be fair. Jason Tatum is a top-tier player. He should be there. Jalen Brown absolutely should be there. But my pulling this back now to the collusion and the fact that people are concerned about them being around other players, let me throw this at you, Max. Does it still mean something to be a Boston Celtic? I think it, 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 it depends. And I did a, uh, we had a zoom call with uh, Kimball Walker and Kimball Walker talked about all of a sudden he felt this Celtic mystique the mystique that comes along with it. Yeah. They're still that. And then I think it's still oh. there. I still believe it's there with the Lakers and there's certain teams Lakers, right yeah. now that you have that swagger that you say, you know, so who did you play for? Oh, I play for the Celtic. Whoa, Celtic play for the Lakers. Those are the two primary teams. So yeah, I, I still believe it has a, a lot of cachet that goes along with it. But at the end of the day, I think a lot of it is about uh, finances and about getting players on different teams. And, and at the end of the day, it's about winning championships. And this is this is the bottom line. What will the Celtics do to compete? Can they compete? right now as they are. I think that they still need to add pieces and this team is still incomplete because they have not used that trade exception yet. What is that going to bring? Is it, is it going to be another brilliant stroke by Danny Ainge? That's what everybody, you know, wants to find out if that's going to happen. Yeah. You know what? I I agree with you, Max. I I think um, just playing at the garden, I think there's still a mystique to it. You look up, you see those banners. I I don't think that's just what people say because they feel like they have to. Right. I I think that's genuine. And you look at the last chapter between the Celtics and Lakers, like these kids, they they weren't, you know, they they remember that, you know, they're not that young. Right. You know, they remember Kobe. They remember Garnett on the Celtics. They don't remember. They don't remember that, but they, you get in that environment. There's a certain feel. Well, no, I think that, they, I think they do game, remember it. No, that, like Joshua, Bobby doesn't even remember to that game that you that is. No, Bobby's like 22, man. I'm talking about like a, I'm talking about like 25 to 30 year olds. I, I think. Oh, they remember it. Yeah, that still resonates with them, right? Ten years ago, they're in high school. It's still the whole thing with Celtic Lakers. That's still there. It would be right. it'd be akin to Yankees Red Sox when you see those two teams, but they're. There's just certain, you know, I don't know enough about hockey to, to say anything about that, but, you know, baseball teams, I can say, or even football teams. You think right. about it, it, it was, is it still a mystique right now to be, to have the star on the side of your helmet, to be a, a mm-hmm. Dallas Cowboy, as bad mm-hmm. as they've been, is it yeah. still a mystique? I think that certain franchise will hold uh, that mystique forever, ever in a day. That is Boy, reassuring. Cowboys the best example, Max. That's a really good example, man. When's the last time that, you know, and, and people, they're still diehard fans. They're still that mystique. They're still that uh, grand franchise right up there with the Patriots, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, people still talk about Jerry Jones. And Jerry Jones, yeah. And you look at that team every Jerry year, Jones, big yeah. Cowboy fans, yeah. and all they do every year is they continue to suck. They continue <laughs> to suck. And you're going – Man, this is just bad. And then when they lost their quarterback Zach last year, <laughs> and it was bad, and they just haven't competed. I mean, <laughs> you look at the Washington Red. Well, I can't say Jack. Red. Washington <laughs> football team. Football team. They they end up getting in. They end up having what almost a losing record to to win their division. So it's just it, it it's just crazy. But you think about great franchises, and you you see those shirts, and you you know you just kind of wearing with honor. You remember for a while how it was to be a Chicago Bull fan. That was just- A Celtics fan, it wasn't so long ago. It, it, but but the Chicago Bull fan, that that, yeah. that that's faded away now. Oh yeah. Miami Heat, that's faded away now. But you get certain franchises who they, they live. It's like Pittsburgh Steelers, they live on. Certain mm-hmm. franchises just do. How much, like you mentioned the banners, Joe Swaley, and this has been on the tip of my tongue as you guys know, Heard Perk mention it, Max. I think you might even have talked about it on radio. How much do the young leaders of the Boston Celtics, Josue, miss the fan motivation in the stands and even the fan hatred in the opposing arenas? I think I think that's relevant. I, I think uh, you know if, if you were on this team two two years ago, I, I think you truly understand. I mean, obviously last season you, you remember what it was like to play at TD Garden, but mm-hmm. I think guys like Jalen and Jason. 
uh, you know, Tatum, Marcus Smart, it's a little different for them, right? Because they they went deep into the playoffs and they knew how much of an advantage it is to have that. Now, of course, it's not the same, but at the, at the same time, I also think that the Celtics on the road, I don't think whether there's a crowd or there or, or no crowd, I think it's always been that us against them mentality. I don't know if that necessarily uh, helps them or sways them one way or another. If anything, it probably would probably hurt them, if, you know, if, if there were crowds. Uh, on the road but but I'm with you because some teams they feed off of that obviously you see records the the difference between home and away some teams they they prefer or they play better a little better on the road but I think the Celtics team could really benefit from some home cooking uh the old the old TD Garden style for sure maybe sooner but here but here's what Nick will say and he's and and this is why I say he's right what's going to happen is that you're going to have maybe 10 percent of the crowd there going to be yeah, gonna look like the ABA. They finally come in, and then what will Nick say? He'll he'll call me in the middle. They're pumping noise in, Max. They're <laughs> pumping fan noise in. <laughs> they Nick, have Nick, been fan Nick, noise wait, let me tell you what Nick soccer. called me the other day. He said yesterday. Oh my God! He said in New Orleans what they were doing. They were pumping in. Uh, the refs Ref suck. suck. I was like, no, they weren't. He got he on goes, on he Twitter. Was, he said, no, he said it was on. He said it there was. There were people on, there. He yes. said. It was on, he said it was on Twitter, and I was like, "No, I it said, was on Twitter." I said, "That's why you can't <laughs> believe everything on Twitter." <laughs> right. but I thought I heard it with Did my you own ears. Think, you hear? You hear, Max? It was on that, Twitter. Like, wait a minute. Fans. Do you think that New Orleans, an NBA team, is going to <laughs> say, you know? Hey, turn that thing on right there and say oh, oh, the oh, yeah, might be right about that. But what did I say, Max? Oh, oh yeah, you might be right about yeah, that. Yeah, you might be right there. But Joe Sway just said something. There were fans there yesterday. Yeah. Maybe it was the fans saying it. It might have been one thousand percent the fans, Nick. That's the whole point. I mean, you what, heard it too. What, what New? Yeah, of course. What New Orleans had <laughs> was incredible. There were there was legit a crowd there, but the only difference was uh, most home teams. When you're playing against the Celtics, that's what happens, right? It's at least yeah, there's always yeah. that fraction of 20% of the fans are Celtics fans. So yeah. it was a little split. More. I, I wouldn't call it 50-50. It was more towards the uh, the Pelicans, mm-hmm. but there were a lot of Celtics fans there for sure. So what fans? I'm so confused. Like, what fans are being there let in? There were people in the lower bowl, which is crazy because I thought that they were only going to do balcony only, but there were people no, uh, in the loge. But, maybe not the lower the bowl, but they were, they were in the loge. The fans the loge. right now at the Garden are going to be in the loge area. Are they? So that's where they're going. That's where they're going to be. I've heard that you know where we broadcast now in the garden. We're going to be moved up a little bit, and the fans are going to be around the bowl, which is going to be weird. I understand mm. that you know you you want to bring fans back, but it's not going to hit until you have a full house again. It's going to be Max like the NBA game. Max ain't going to take no pictures this time. Max like, nope, get away from me. <laughs> Don't talk to me. I'm working. Max. Will don't you, give me COVID. Will you don't don't give me COVID. Oh, I dress up. When I come, no, I dress up when I go to the garden. You do yeah, now? Yeah. You're still dress, looking sharp? I, yeah, I'm I dress sure. up when I go to the garden. But I'm thinking with fans. When I'm, at, when I'm at Beasley Studio, you know, I'm, oh, my goodness. I am bummed the that. day. <laughs> I am bummed the day over in that studio, laid back. Pull up, you pull up the sweatpants on. I, I love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> hey, Max, well, what, what, did you, uh, <laughs> Is it just me, or I didn't know Brian Scalabrini projects his voice so loud when he's on? Man, I could hear him from up top. Yeah, yo, I'm up in the halo and he's screaming. I'm like, man, you about to get to my report? We are standing beside him and we got headphones on, and and he comes off after the game and he is he is screaming. Let me tell you, (laughs) fans, Jesus. Christ, man. Well, and Gorman's so soft spoken. Yeah, no, Gorman, <laughs> Gorman's not on then. Yeah. No, uh, oh, yeah, you don't hear him. Post game. Play. Post game. Is post Brian, game. Brian Scalabrini and his closing remarks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, somebody in the studio. That's when he got into my report. His voice oh, made it to my report because he was goodness. screaming. He is just like, it, like, <laughs> dude, that's the, you don't. These are called microphones. They they project <laughs> out. You don't have Can't to you be a mentor. You should be a mentor and tell them. Tell Scal. I'm not. I'm not a mentor that way. These are microphones. You mind your own business. You're not, you're not trying to scream back to the studio so they can hear. Help Scal. You know. Yo, Nick. Nick. I look down. 
I looked down and I was like, I know Max is fucking pissed right now. Like I just knew it. <laughs> just looked at Max. I was like, yo, you got it. He, if I, I can hear him up here, that. I don't yeah. even. I don't even listen. We're out of there. Probably. I was gonna say he's on the pipe by then. <laughs> we get a couple. We get a couple of minutes and then that's it. That's about all. <laughs> so where's this team gonna go, guys? I mean, really. Uh, I just pulled a D lemon. I didn't direct that at anyone. No, Max, that was how far. How far can this team go? You know what? That is a great question. And I, as constructed, and, and as constructed, as constructed, the way they as are coach. right now, I would say second round, second round. And yeah. Depending on who they who they play, they beat somebody in the first round. Second round, it would be that would be tougher. But if they met. Philadelphia right now, the way the Philly's playing, or Brooklyn, the way they're playing. I mean, I don't think the Celtics right now, uh, you know, have enough firepower to to go with those guys. But uh, Max, what's I mean, I'm, Josue, way, I'm not cutting you. I have to ask this to both of you. I know you have a comment there, Sway, but what's oh, yeah. so different besides Gordon? What's so different? Ennis Cantor? Um, I mean, come on. That, I would say... The, that's I would say, on, honestly, Nick, that the, the focus on defense is one that, that sticks out to me. You think and Gordon was a vocal leader on defense? He never talked. Didn't well, no, no, no. I'm not saying you Gordon. Be, I'm saying you don't overall, have to be vocal. They were, the they were more connected when Gordon was out there. What yeah, I, well, that's okay. true. What 20% of the time, right, Joe. What Smith. I've seen right now is this team, they, they can outscore you. And over the last couple of years, they could outdefend you. And mm-hmm. they haven't mm-hmm. they haven't really defended. You think about the yes, right. yesterday's game. Oh. I mean, you're up by twenty. You up by twenty six points in the, to the opposition. It, it, there's no way you lose that game. But they couldn't yeah. defend. And and you and then once their jump shots stop going, and which I'm that's saying, always the case. Well, how about how about this? How about just attacking the rim? Get a couple, yeah. please. Bro. Please. That's exactly what the Pelicans were doing, and they were right. getting the over they, and over. They again. settle. They settle for the now. Jalen Brown was attacking the rim, but other yeah. than that, everybody else was uh, consistently being a jump shooter. And uh, so I, I just think that, and you know, when they're playing at their best with that team, like yesterday, there was a point when I was like, "Man, these guys can be really Me good." Too. Tristan Thompson mm-hmm. and was going along well. He was playing well with Tice. And then you had those Robert three, Williams. You had those three wing guys and Robert Williams. So I just think if if they can just get some consistency, man, they could be tough. They I, I tell you what, they're not going to be easy out, and there's not a team that would want to play them because of that. Well, that's let me ask not you what opposing that. that's not what opposing teams are saying. I mean, well, me, opposing me, teams are saying Jalen and Jason are no leaders. Sorry, Josue. Let me ask you, well, that kind of ties into what I'm about to ask, Max, because this is something that I think has been a problem. And I saw it, you know, right away in the beginning. It seemed like they corrected it, but then they went back to it. They, it seemed like they, they they started the first quarter like it was the fourth. It was like, Kemba's mm-hmm. got to score, Taylor's got to score, whereas it wasn't. You've been saying that all season. Let's get the ball around and let's mm-hmm. get the best shot available. Mm-hmm. And that used to be, or at least sometimes throughout the season, you see that. And the best example of that was against the who the Toronto Raptors, right? 30 assists, 23 pointers. Yeah. Like those three pointers, I'm not saying the Celtics can go out there and, and drop 23s a night, but the reason why they were able to break a record between Pritchard and Shemi Ojale was again because when the ball swinging and you're and you're looking for the best shot, not necessarily the best player to take those be- to, to take those open shots, more likely than not, you're an NBA player who can shoot threes, you're wide open, you're gonna make those. And you keep and, and teams don't respect those guys. You know, Pritchard, uh, Ojale, uh, you know, uh, Grant Williams when he wasn't in, the, in the rotation. <laughs> no, not Taco. I, I think, uh, I think that, you get what I'm I saying, Max? Like, I, think, I, 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 think, I think one I think of the teams has that, to empower these guys. Well, I think one of the things that happens with this team is you, you, you watch the possessions and watch and see if the ball gets stuck. There are many times when the ball gets stuck with Kimba. They definitely mm-hmm. get stuck with Jalen. Mm-hmm. With, with Jason, excuse me. Jason. Uh, Jalen, Jalen Brown, know me, he he's gonna do whatever it is. He's gone. He might even he's lose just, the ball. He's usually he's, attacking. He's, he's just gonna attack. He, he's he's gone. But if you look at Jason many times, it's dribble, 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 stutter step, shake you up, the new age game. And that burns minutes, that burns seconds off the clock. And really doesn't get you. So I think that he's a great player, but he has to execute a little bit more quickly to get everybody involved. And then to keep 
the defense off balance. If I know a Tatum. guy going to dribble yeah, six, Tatum. seven, eight times, and I'm on the other side, I'm just waiting. I'm counting. Okay, he's going to dribble again. He's going to dribble again. He's going to dribble again. He might even come back. When he makes quicker decisions, I think that's the best, the best part for the Celtics. You know, Max, before the game, I was on uh, um, I was on Sports Hub, 95 Sports Hub with Christian Arkin. And I remember what he was, you know, he's in panic mode, just like, you know, a lot of people coming to Celtics are, or at least Celtics fans are. And, you know, again, we talked about the offense and, and, and Tatum making guys better. And I told him, I said, listen, from the very beginning and up until this point, I think that's the next step in Tatum's uh, progression, right? I think I see a lot of a young LeBron James in him. Remember when LeBron was at this stage? I want to say like 08, when he just lost against the Celtics, where he was in so many difficult positions where it was like, he, to your point, right? Those, those uh, Cavalier teammates, they weren't the best, right? Going up against the Celtics, at least, the, you know, that the big not three. According, not according to but Nick. They were great. Not they were according great to Nick, teams. right? Not according best to Nick. team in the East. Not every, 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 every decision not according he to made, Nick. The, the margin People of error. short-term memories. Listen, the margin of error was so different for someone like him because he had to make those decisions. He had to carry that burden. And I think when that's what made him an excellent player once he figured out how to empower his teammates. I think that's what's the next I think that's what what's the next step is for Tatum. You, you know, know I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump. That's true. I think that's true. I think that you're both forgetting that 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 Jalen Brown went, I think, a streak of games during that that really bad stretch where I don't think he logged an assist for three games. I think he had one assist. In yeah, five. See, I was just what I was I'm looking at. I'm not too concerned to about that. Jalen because Jalen most time, most of the time, he has to take on the the, the best player on the court, right? Although, or at least the best opposing uh, player. So on offense, if he's in attack mode, if he's attacking the rim or he, you know taking those those pull up or those wide open three pointers, I'm not. I don't, I'm okay with that. I'm looking for guys like Tatum and, 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 and Kemba to be the top distributors in that, in that lineup. When I, but when I hear you making your teammates better, I think that's an ingredient to an all-star or a superstar. You've got to have more than zero assists. Well, well no, well, I, know, I think that's, I think it's true. Yeah, that's true. I think it's true, but, but you have to look at it this way, Nick, if you pass the ball and somebody doesn't make the shot, <laughs> that is a really good point, and that, no yeah. one else is making so, shots. So that's, yeah, that's what that's what Jalen would say. That, that is, he might pass it to somebody. They don't make the shot, then it, so it, it goes for not. So I, I think you look, oh, man. At, but you know what? We're not talking about. We're not talking about really one thing. We're not talking about the glue of this team, and we see Marcus how Smart. valuable Marcus Smart. Thank you. Yeah. All these people who have been on this, Marcus Smart, I hate what he does. He playing. shoots too much. He oh, doesn't play master. What he does is he connects this team on the defensive end like nobody else. And because of him controlling the initial point of attack on the defensive end, it helps their defense. Right now, they don't have him. So they don't have that person controlling the initial point There's of attack. There's more. And, and and he is he is, uh, believe it or not, he is their yeah, best. Is the he's their best. He's their best facilitator. He's their mm -hmm. best passer. So mm -hmm. there are all these things you miss about him. The intangibles. More. That, that's what. That's what people aren't focused on right now. They're just focused on the losses, which I understand, but they also need to focus on that part too. In the fairness, it's a style of losses. But Marcus, we're forgetting about the emotion. Had he been there yesterday, our boy Gary Washburn would have been perched outside the locker room because I think Marcus would have fucking, excuse my mouth, he would have flipped the hell out on, on that second unit. Max, when you were playing, you're starting. Second unit comes in. They blow a 30-point lead, and KC has to put you back in the game. You guys would have had a, a – you know, you would have had something to say about that probably. That would have been terrible. But, you know, it's uh, – You had a great bench. But, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that helped. The, the big, the big difference, and when you're talking about Kevin McHale, big, when you're talking about having McHale and Danny Ainge and Scott yeah. Whitman and all these guys come, so you're talking about a, a different brand. It's like Michael Cooper was talking before, and he's saying how you know the Lakers had a great bench, Celtics had a great bench. You don't have. That's the thing about the NBA is it's so diluted now. When you start mm -hmm. thinking about it, you get past your your seven, then you know the rest of the guys might not even play. And I'm telling you, I've been so disappointed. I thought he was going to have a great year with Jeff T. I thought oh, Jeff T. Oh. 
And Jeff oh. Deacon, Jeff Deacon's just so did Danny struggled. Ainge. He has struggled mightily. <laughs> I, I mean, he started out this year. He wasn't, he, you know, he was pretty good knocking down shots. But then the last <laughs> yeah, that one game, bro. Yeah, the, the one last season opener. <laughs> the last it. five, six games. He I don't even know. Did Brad even play him yesterday? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Did he? I, I don't really I remember. Hope he didn't. It must have been for a second or two, but I think he might have played for a couple of seconds. But, you know. I don't he, think he did, bro. I mean, Brad Thompson is level in, in Jeff G is kind of going south. Tristan Thompson made a great point. To He's me. out the rotation. And, and one thing you're starting to see is Tristan Thompson rounding his game yeah. into playing, playing shape. And he made a great point by saying, he hasn't played basketball in almost. Yep, a year. and you've been saying that, Max, all season. Yeah, yeah. You've been saying that. What you do? You guys had him post game yesterday, mm, Tristan. No, we only have post game winners. Uh, <laughs> oh shit! You sound like Trump. That's a very Trumpian thing. I know say. that's just a true Shots statement. Fired. The only time we get guests is after a Celtic win. So we what did uh, what did Lonzo Ball have to say? No. no? <laughs> we, <laughs> you know, well, we used to, you know, it's real funny. We used to do that, and we we would get back then because the Celtics won't win the games. We'd have post game. We'd get post game from the opposing team, and I, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. He played. You would. In he was a guard, and uh, God, what was his name? Very he was a guard. Wait here, wait here. Played it. I'm gonna tell you. Okay, I'm gonna give you the clues because you. Tip to he, no, he played. Ray for uh, He started out with uh, Robert Reed. Maryland. He started out playing with Maryland, and he ended up being in Houston later on. Oh uh, man, I cannot think of his name. But essentially, we had him as a guest. Didn't he turn his chair to you? This he, no, we gave him. A, <laughs> we gave him a, a gift certificate <laughs> for some jewelry. <laughs> what? Like about three, four hundred dollar gift certificate. He's like, what, what, what am I gonna do with this? <laughs> what did you say? I'll take it. <laughs> you know, I guess Steve Francis. Steve Francis was. Oh, it was Francis. Steve oh, Francis. yeah, Steve Maryland. Steve Francis essentially came out, and after he did the interview, gave him a gift certificate. He looked at like, what? Did he take it or did he leave? No, nah, ended up giving it back to us. He said, I can't even get a nice pinky ring with this. Man, I can't get nothing for $300. <laughs> You're just insulting me as, I, as I'm rocking my platinum chain over here. <laughs> platinum, man. So oh, I, my I, God. I, you know, all right, two on this. You know, the Celtics have yeah, one more. That's a great era in basketball, this. though. Man. Yeah, it was. The yeah, Celtics have one more, uh, one more win than the Knicks right now. Um, it is going to be the TP that, that is going to pretty much get this team back in order, isn't it? He needs to bring in. John Collins, who, who's he bringing with this? Max, I don't think you, have a, the, you have the bat line. Fish, Max, what do you think? I don't think it's a big John, Collins, John Collins was good in the first game, and mm -hmm. in the second game against the Celtics. Yeah, yeah, but see, but see, Collins, big Collins fans, they didn't mention that one, right? They don't talk yeah. about no. that. No, yeah, the first. It, one. It, they, it, it was first as if he didn't play. Really, all you Celtics good. fans out there, it's all you want. To, you all, all you want to focus on the first one, right? The first outing. Yeah, they, they was so. I, I'm not. I'm. I, you know, I think he's a. He could help you out. In the post, but I would want Barnes with a little bit. Yeah, Barnes would be the guy. Barnes I'd would be know, good because uh, I think that Barnes comes in and Harrison Barnes is can be a consistent score. You put him in the corner, he's gonna knock down jump shots, and he can he can drive towards the hoop. And it's really funny though. Simi Ojale has been really good this year. Mm -hmm. But do do you really? And 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 I think you have to put. Do you do you want to put your trust in him? That he would be, mm -hmm. or would you? Okay, you answer that one. <laughs> yeah. Answer that one. Or yeah, would you? got to talk with in the middle. <laughs> he's answer your no, question. No, no, no. He answered. He answered. I, I know just, what he's gonna ask. No, I don't. Trust I mean, him. I mean, he's a. Uh, Simi has been a real good defender, and he mm -hmm. shot. He shot the ball shot well. well this year. Uh, mm -hmm. But you just don't. You don't trust that. Uh, you don't trust that car. Do you? No, I'm saying you. You said I asked you the question. Well, I just yeah, said, no. I said you? no. Nick. What you mean? I said no. I think, you mean in, in, to be consistent in crunch time? Well, to rely on? Here, here's what I think you get with Harrison Barnes. You get a more reliable shooter. No question. And you get a guy who has a championship pedigree. 
Mm-hmm. And because of that, I think he, they're lacking that. I think he gives you an upgrade on how to win. And mm-hmm. that to me, that is so important for a young team because there was a time, uh, I think it was against Atlanta and you looked out on the floor and the Celtics were so young. Robert Williams was the oldest guy they had out there on the floor at 25 years old. That's why I think a guy like Barnes, who is a total professional, uh, can shoot the ball, uh, brings you that championship experience. You got to love it. I agree. Joshua? Yeah, yeah, no question. I mean, that's the guy on top of my list. Um, I, I'm not the, I'm not crazy about drumming or uh, bringing oh, in a drumming, big. Please. I like I like this. Uh, I call it the, the three-headed monster. I, I like it. I think for the Celtics right now, they have to uh, obviously – continue to work at it and figure it out. But I think they can figure this thing out between the three of them, between Thompson, between uh, Robert Williams, between Tice, all three of them bring something to the table. And, and yeah. uh, it's, it's all different, but it's all necessary for the Celtics team. So I'm hoping they address that, that, that wing position. I do. I, I like Harrison Barnes. I just don't know if realistically does, does it happen without putting in someone like Marcus Smart? I mean, Matt, I let me ask you that. Cool. I mean, how do you yeah. I, I don't, it have what? I don't envision the, the, the Sacramento Kings trading somebody mm-hmm. who's who's not going to, you know, his contract's not going to run out. They can still hold on to him, and they can probably get a better package deal than getting a, a couple pieces from the Celtics, right? If, if, if I'm the Sacramento Kings, I'm not even going to answer the phone if you're not trading me Marcus Smart, right? Mm-hmm. I mean... Does that end the deal? This is Harrison Barnes you're talking about. That, that, I that's don't a Danny drop that? Well, there are some teams, Joe Sway, that are trying to eventually downgrade so they can be in the lottery again. Mm-hmm. You think Sacramento is going to be one of those? Sacramento has been the star of that. Do you think concept. Sacramento is going to be one of those teams? <laughs> they, they, so, they've done well so with themselves, right? What, Buddy Hill, 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 what, you, what you do is you move, you move players. And you don't know, the thing about it, we don't know who's going to be available. And I think that's a big thing. We don't know who's going to be available. And until then, that, that's going to be it. Yeah, that's true. A lot. A last topic, quick. Okay. A lot of Danny bashing. A lot of do, uh, Doc. Blast from the past. A lot no, of Danny blasting. A lot back. of Brad blasting. Oh, I'd take Doc back in a heartbeat. You would have uh, took Doc back last summer. I cried when he left, just like when Max got traded. Only uh, I was forty-five. No, I'm just that, kidding. <laughs> I would have kept that to myself. No, a lot of a lot of do, uh, Danny and, and and Brad bashing. Do they hold any of the blame here? I mean, Danny obviously puts the teams together. Everybody. I mean, Nick, this no everybody I feel does. like that everybody uh, is mm-hmm. part of this, uh, a part of the things that are going on with this team. And it starts with, you know, starts with your coaches, goes mm-hmm. to the players, and it goes with the people who are selecting players. So mm-hmm. I don't think that anybody is immune to saying that you looked at this team and you would think that the New York Knicks – would be one game right now behind the Boston Celtics. You would never, you'd have never thought that. Mm-hmm. And uh, with the kind of talent that you have on this team. But again, I think that we're missing that valuable part that we're not talking about how good this team no. is with Marcus Smart. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that's, that, that ends the conversation because you are, you are missing one of the best players on your team. And without I agree. him, without him, you're you're not gonna know where you stand until you get him back. Until you t- make that trade exception, the the I, swagger I, that this team is missing is palpable without Marcus. Go ahead, Josue. No, I, I I agree to that to a certain extent, though. But I, I think the, the the most important player is someone else in the backcourt. I think I think it's Kemba Walker, and I think he's yeah. shown me a lot of positive signs. And listen, from the beginning, I, I wasn't necessarily worried about Kemba because for me, it was he needs to be the eye test. The, I don't care what the box score looks like for those first 10, 12 games that he's back. I want to make sure that he's moving the right way. And, he, and he's been doing that. And now he's starting to pick up some momentum here. So I think that's very important for this team. Obviously, you want to work him off the ball a little more. You want to try to make things easier for him. Uh, I thought Brad Stevens mentioning that to the public was really important to let everybody know mm-hmm. that obviously he's in the transition phase and to getting his fatigue back. So that's a big part in this as well. But yeah, I mean, I Marcus agree. Smart is a huge part of this identity. Uh, the defense, of course, because uh, these guys don't have to step it up on the defensive end. The, 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 there's no question that this team can put up points in a hurry and that they have players, even off, the, even off that second bench. We talk about how thin they are, but they can put up points. We've seen it already. 
No, so you I think, think yeah. it's a matter of finding consistency, but that consistency that's going to come from the defensive end first before it you know, yeah. trickles down to the offensive end on the floor. And that's how they're connected through Marcus on that. Yeah. Team. And so true. A bunch of people talk about his offense. I think he's he's very valuable offensively, but defensively, you know, he is he is like a, you know, he he is their man. And without him, they've just not been because there are times when you think about if a buddy heel was scoring against you, what do you say? Hey, Marcus Smart, go get that dude. Let's yeah. shut him down. Poor Zingas, you need to be on him. He has been, and and I'll say it again, under under seven feet tall. Take out Mr. Russell, take out Garnett. Marcus Smart is the best defender the Celtics have ever had. Nick, Nick, don't cry, okay? Don't say because you'll be going, but Larry, but Larry, I want somebody. Oh, come on. He was third team all defense twice or second team. That's what me and Kevin McHale used to say going. I know. I was getting... <laughs> it's because you guys guarded the, the hard players to guard. One more thing. This is a max favorite. Fan take. Fan take. People are saying, bring back Terry, get rid of Kemba. Max, I got to get the reaction oh, from Max here. Go you you got to be kidding me with this. Look at Max's face. That's all that needs to be. No, I, I, see it right now. I, I think that now I see Kimba, it. what Kemba get, it gave you last year and when he first got here was unreal. He mm -hmm. was as consistent as he he is connected with the fan base. I think it's going to be, you know, I let, Kyrie, him, you need let him get let him get healthy and he's gonna be mm -hmm. fine. Yeah, I agree. I'm with you, man. And you know what? If there's I one agree. person on, on this team that knows about struggling in the NBA, especially for what over a decade in Charlotte, or at least close to it, it's Kemba Walker. So Kemba is gonna be, and he of course said nothing but the right things Monday after practice. Uh, so I mean, that's I'm not worried about Kemba Walker for sure. I, I just yeah. think obviously his health. Barring any other injuries or something else flaring up, I like I like the Celtics' chances with, with Kemba uh, continuing on this path to returning to who he was. Okay. I agree, and that will be a wrap. I'm Nick Gelso. with the honor of being asked to kind of host these two legends. Good job, Nick. I, I like, this, legend uh, I like this host voice you got going on. It's like this like game you show like it. slash podcast. Well, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of like a 1970s match game, you know. You're too young to know that. Max knows it. Look at him. I don't even know what yeah. that means. I got that long stick mic, you know. What's a match? Um, yeah. Oh, dude. Go on YouTube. It is classic shit. Classic. And I'm doing my best Bob Barker. Voice. All right, so Nick, tell me, who wins the car, man? Who wins the convertible? Uh, not Max. They gave out a watch that year, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know what? With that, it's time to leave Zoom now. Yo, hold on, real quick, real quick, oh, Max. Real quick, real quick. I'm listening to this rap song. I don't remember what song it was, but the guy goes, he goes, I'm rocking a Rolex now. I ain't got no more Seikos. I lost it, man. I thought of you right away. Oh. <laughs> it said it in the credits, dedicated to Cornbread Maxwell, MVP. I thought of you right away. I was like, man, I know someone got a Seiko. Thank you. I know yes. somebody. Rock All right, Seiko. gentlemen. All right. Cedric Maxwell podcast, powered by Marigal <laughs> Medical. And Max is going to be dunking soon. Uh, we'll talk more about that later next show. Uh, thanks, all.